Let's be honest, most drone pilots don't pull out a sectional chart every time they fly. But if you're taking your FAA Part 107 remote pilot test, you pretty much have to know how to read them. And honestly, I think it's a skill that goes way beyond just passing the exam. Learning how to interpret a sectional chart will make you a safer pilot, give you a better sense of where you can and can't fly, and deepen your understanding of how our airspace works. In this video, we're gonna cover what sectional charts actually are, the difference between mean sea level and above ground level, how to read airspace classifications in detail, some of the most important symbols you need to know, and at the end, we'll do a five question quiz to lock it all in. So grab your charts and let's get started. So what are sectional charts? I think you can think of sectional charts as roadmaps for the sky. They're published by the FAA and updated 56 days, so pilots have the most accurate current information possible. They show you the controlled and uncontrolled airspace, airports and their features, terrain elevation, obstacles like towers and wind turbines, and also some special use airspace like military zones and restricted areas. And on the part one of seven test, they'll show you a snippet of one and ask, what airspace is this? Or can you fly here without authorization? So before we jump into airspace classes, we have to clear up one thing, altitude. And there are two main types, MSL, which stands for mean sea level. This is altitude measured from sea level. It's a fixed reference point and it's what sectional charts mostly use. AGL is above ground level. This is altitude measured from the ground directly beneath you. So here's an example. Let's say the ground where you're standing is already 500 feet above sea level. If your drone is flying 200 feet AGL, your drone's actual altitude is 700 feet MSL. All right, let's talk about airspace classifications. The National Airspace System has six classes of airspace, A, B, C, D, E, and G. Let's go through them in order. Class A starts at 18,000 feet mean sea level and goes up to 60,000 feet mean sea level. This is airline territory. You'll never fly a drone here and it's not shown on sectional charts. Class B is big and busy airports depicted as solid blue concentric circles on a sectional chart. The numbers around each ring tell you the floor and ceiling in MSL. Here's how to read it. If you see 100 slash SFC, that means the airspace starts at the surface and goes up to 10,000 feet MSL. You need to add two zeros whenever you see numbers like this. So if you see 100 slash 25, that means from 2,500 feet mean sea level up to 10,000 feet mean sea level. You can think of class B as an upside down wedding cake. It's smaller near the ground and wider at high altitudes. Class C is designated for busy regional airports. They're shown as solid magenta circles. The same altitude labeling rules apply as class B. It's two numbers separated by a slash. The top number is the ceiling and the bottom is the floor and both are in mean sea level. Class D is small towered airports and they're depicted with a dashed blue circles. The number in a box like 35 means the ceiling is 3,500 feet MSL. Class D always starts at the surface, unless otherwise noted. Class E is the filler airspace, and Class E comes in a few forms. It's either dashed magenta lines and means that it starts at the surface, or shaded magenta, which means it starts at 700 feet AGL. If you see no shading, it often starts at 1,200 feet AGL. Class G is the uncontrolled airspace, and this is where most of us drone pilots fly. It's not marked on sectional charts. Typically, it extends from the surface up to the base of Class E. Class G fills the gaps at the surface until Class E begins. So, Class E is always above you, but its floor changes depending on the chart markings. Let's review some key symbols that you should know for the test. Blue airports have control towers. Magenta airports do not have a tower. Tick marks around the circle. This indicates that fuel is available during normal operating hours. Here's a symbol that looks like a mountain, and it means that there's a tower. Next to it, you'll see a number, like 414. The number means that the top of the tower is 414 feet MSL. 
Note that we do not add zeros to numbers in obstacles. If you see two numbers stacked, the top is mean sea level and the bottom is above ground level. If the obstacle is lighted, it will have hash marks around it. Okay, let's talk about maximum elevation figures. In each grid square, you'll see a big number like 97. That means the highest point, whether terrain or man-made obstacle, in that section is 9,700 feet MSL. Again, we add two zeros to get that number. Airspace altitudes on charts are always shown in MSL. Obstacle heights list both MSL and AGL. Remember that SFC equals surface. So 25 slash SFC means zero feet to 2,500 feet mean sea level. Class B is blue, class C is magenta, class D is dashed blue, class E is magenta, either dashed or shaded. All right, let's wrap it all up with a little quiz. Feel free to pause after I read the question if you need some time before I reveal the answer. Question one, on a class C sectional chart ring, you see 40 slash SFC. What does it mean? The answer is surface to 4,000 feet mean sea level. Question two, what does shaded magenta indicate? The answer is class E starting at 700 feet AGL. Question three, an obstacle symbol says 2756 over 345. What does that mean? The answer is that the top of the obstacle is 2,756 feet mean sea level, and it's 345 feet AGL. Question four, what does an MEF of 87 mean? The answer is that the highest obstacle in that grid square is 8,700 feet mean sea level. All right, one more. Let's say that you see a magenta airport symbol with tick marks around it. What does that tell you? And the answer is that the airport has fuel available during normal hours, but no control tower. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope it helped you prepare for the part 107 remote pilot test. If this video helped, make sure to give it a like so more pilots can find it. I've also got some other videos on the part 107 as well. One that's related to weather questions, you'll see questions that stumped me when I took the test, and one on flight patterns that I think every pilot should know. I'll link them below so you can binge through and boost your score. Until next time, fly safe and I'll see you in the next one.